other side of the screen. This is Simple with a Robin Garden Artist. Please watch this video, Simple Garden, a space in time and horticultural art. Please watch it to the end and please, please share this with people. I was trying to share this ideas and fun to other people before it disappeared. Video was taken a week before everything disappeared in a dream I had. Yes, and you can see the pain I was in back then because I had no clue what I was doing or where I would be going after this chapter. This garden was only seven years old, 1985 to 1992. Then it disappeared in memory. Yes, it was the last century. Imagine that. This video was a copy of a cop I received coming across the country in my van. The quality is pretty bad. I was trying to keep what I can share and teach of my ideas I had back then. And this was before I really got into the native plant movement, the grass movement, and the tropical movement. And you can't believe this was in Southeast PA, the tropical plants, huh? <laughs> never say never. So, I never had an opportunity to study horticulture back then. Please watch it to the end and tell me what you think. Please share share this with people. I know the second time you see it, you probably will get it. <laughs> Have fun in the garden space. Why not? Good health until next time. Yep. Oh, hi, I'm Simple in the horticulture art. My definition of horticulture art is what you will be seeing in the next couple minutes. All for fun, I'll be pointing out my design, my surprise elements, stuff I recycle, lighting and sound, all through my garden. So if you want to follow me along, be a quick time. I hope you can take something home and learn. So follow me along. Corner of this intersection. Rock Road and King Road is a very special egg. all for fun. It will make you think a lot can do and what you can do with mechanics and surprise elements. It's all for fun. A lot of humor. Why not have humor in the garden? People are always tight ass. They don't want to do anything. But why not make bring a smile to people? Like for example, this little pet taking a piss on the horse. Keep the keep the pH down. Keep all the weeds killed. <laughs> He's all for fun. This was supposed to be a giraffe. I was pruning it, I was standing on my hood of my truck and it fell off and broke up three foot of his neck. He has had a shrunken neck now. Game with the Z, Zox, something tree, Indian toothache tree. They used to chew in it, I don't know, something like that. It's backdrop for the sun when it comes up in the morning and his eyes really glow with the light back in. All for fun, it gets nice coloration in the fruit in the fall. Why not give it a color, smell, yes. And this design is just for fun. I stage it so when they see it, it's always backwards. Anyhow, let's follow me along to the main entrance. We finally made it at Temple's Garden. It's really space and time. The definitions on part of orchard art is what you will be seeing. All for fun, strange humor. But then again, I'm simple. I can get away with it. Why not give it a try? Think dies, replant. What up? Anyhow, follow me along. Well, along this major entrance, getting into the garden, is a collection of SBA fruit trees. SBA does not have to be on a wall. Why not have a free standing screen out to the people you don't like to look at? Like the neighbors are always look at you, always complain about. It could be free standing. It could be any shape you want. Always change. Why not? If you don't like it, just snip it off, and Mother Nature will produ produce another bud. Good woman, man. You know that. As you see, these trees are about 116 feet long. There's 18 fruit trees, all edible. I have very bad luck with stone fruits because the production and I, they die out of me. I do not spray. I do spray herbicides. I'm a one person business and I do not spray. Everything I keep, all my trees I keep within well, six inches or eight inches wide. Many heights. The height, highest one is up to probably 10 feet, 12 feet wide. My first is an Asiatic pearl. It's really great. So I'm about six foot. It's about probably seven and a half foot high and eight foot wide. It's pretty young. It's not even uh, eight years old. It's great. When you leave in the morning, you can drive by and pick a fruit for breakfast as you go down in the traffic jam. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what pollinates it. It's not a self pollinator, but something, something pollinates around here. And it's really loaded with fruit and it does a lot. And if, if the fruit buds is on the very tip, as you can see, as you get, get close. Anyhow, this is a great tree. But let's go to the next tree. This is, I, I always call it my claim to fame. I put a lot of heart in it. Do a lot. You can shape a lot of trees by just bending limbs and twisting them and tying them. I don't use good practice on tying. I see uh, some of this been girdled in, in, well, been girdled into the tree, but you know, so what? It dies, it dies. You can always cut it out. It, it grows over top. Mother Nature is a strong person. This is my wood around. Uh, and it self grafted if you can see it. Quite strong now. We already healed up tight, and from that point on, it'll be that tight. More, put out a lot of the truth. Well, actually, it's a four in one. By mistake, I cut up the wrong limb and I cut up the fifth tree. Uh, the five in one, some of them grow very vigorously. Like this is a different type from this one. This type over here is a different type from that one because the, that side would tend to grow bigger, but I think it's a Macintosh. This is a delicious, different type, type of tree. 12 foot wide and 7 foot high. And this is a fan. This is one of my original fans I changed to. Anyhow, let's moving on that this is another one. This is a five in one. There's five completely trees budded into one unit. And this tree is pretty old. This will go back to 1978. I came back to freestanding it, free forming it. 
you can do anything with it. I just use sticks just to tie it and to tie it. And as you see, I just been weaving them together when they get long. And, this, and it's not cracking itself, you see. It's quite easy. I do not spray. Kind of stick along the highway. That's enough to hold it apart and have the string. And I'm beginning to, to train it across each other top. This be like a radiating uh, aspire again. I do it all for fun. <laughs> this is my one of my. This is my biggest juicy one. Uh, this is my 21 ounce apple. It's Scott Brothers Jumbo. Kind of spurred this on some tree in California, and the, the limb from that point on goes 21 out of apple. Really big and juicy. And not much, it's very impressive. Keep it all within 8 inches thick, as all you see as you, as you all move on. This is a horizontal cord. It's only 6 foot tall, 12 foot wide. It's a, a ready list. Originally, that, I just twisted the wires around, I mean, uh, the limbs around the wire, and it was self holding, tied them around. Now they're self supporting now in the square unit, two dimensional. And we can move on. This is my yellow delicious apple. It's a horizontal cord. Pretty good tree. Holiday. This is jumbo 21 ounce apple again. I like these big stuff. As you see, I just wall these limbs all in and out together and I keep them within that height. I do all my burning on this head pump from my pickup truck. I can begin up at one end, knock it out of gear and drift down nice and slow and I can prune everything as it go down by. Throw everything in my bed and off I go, I'm done. I usually fade it, cutting off any limbs that comes out where you do not want it. You always cut it back to a couple nodes, as you can see, so that you can push out there more uh, production space. See, yeah, it's very self grafting itself, do more wires and stuff, but you know, it's like, you know, if it dies, it dies, you can always replant it, you know. <laughs> This was real, my, my peach tree. I have a very nice stuff peach tree, but it died on me. This hair tree, I was trying to make it into a heart. I'm always good for heart. I like to put a lot of heart into things. Some reason. found this dump bin of nursery. No half dead. So I stuck it in. Two years, there it is. Nothing to it. Got it almost for nothing. Pear tree, like I said, I have bad high end practices. If it dies, it dies. This is a pretty nice tree, very low maintenance. This is one of the lowest ones I have, less maintenance. Other one, a very vigorous one, that can grow really rapid. I shall point something out. I use M9 to M26. Rootstock is from the base down what it's been grafted onto. M9 is semi dwarf. M26 is medium, 9 to 15 feet. Then you get the side. You never use standard size unless you have a whole wall like Gabriel Andrew to climb up. Semi dwarf is a nice medium size, as you see. You can keep them under 10 feet, so I'm that much wise. Up to your own preference. And this is just a, a fan I was just developing out, radiating out either directions and stuff. There was another one I dumped down in the dump bin. Why not? If you can find it, use it. Never have to go up and buy a good prize what you can do with a sick one. This one I, I'm making so you can hang a sign within it for a business or something. It's be a two squares, one square with another, another one. And it's uh, so easy. I can do one column, let's tie it over, and uh, eventually we'll cut off this piece. Nothing to it. Back to that far. And I'll bring it, bring it over and I'll tie these two together and hang a sign from this one. What sign, I do not know. Now this, I was talking to you about grafting. See how sometimes these grafts does not eject himself and die. You can see the two different types above this graft. You, hear it, you can see what it have been butted into, this nose. But that would keep very, very slow. Low and slow. And this is my uh, Kalium plum tree. Uh, this is the only stone fruit I have beside my, my North Star cherry. I have bad, bad luck with stone fruits. They always die, and especially how the production comes out when the, uh, all the fruit buds are on the end, we prune back. And a lot of times you cut up the fruit buds, not even knowing it. That's the one thing about SBA. Uh, when you're facing a plant, take it on the face of it, cut off a lot of the fruit buds. New tie burrs and little buds that come out from the side of the limb. That is pretty good for SBA, but mostly for aesthetic, the lines of it. You don't get that much from an SBA on the duck. You may think so, but you don't. But mostly you just up, walk and polish and brag about the fruit you have. And this is one of my other bigger ones. And I just tied them around. I was wanting to hang a wind chime in the center of this one. Most likely I probably will not. Came up, radiated out, and I just tied it around. Stop acting itself now. But something I really emphasize, I'm not perfect. Nobody can be perfect. Should be perfect. If they have to have a big head. And this is my Bing cherry. I have bad luck on fruit. See, it kept dying out. Cherry ball, or to throw it into it. Must have laid an egg in there. Well, that's probably what's killing it. But this was on its way out for two years. I always leave it there for a year or two to show people I'm not perfect. Uh, pear trees is pretty nice, very nice, you can aim them, they slow growing and stuff. I really like pear trees, it's really great for SPA You know, you can't have everything. And this is a fan, uh, this is an apple tree, I can do another nursery dump. I potted it up and made a fan, I cut off the top, it was all rotted, decayed, so I cut off the top of it, making a fan out of this. I do not know way it will develop yet. I expect to radiate the back and forth, good tight webbing fan. This is a 1977, this is one of my older ones. It's great, it was all loaded with cherries. But the only thing is, the day before I came, the birds came and ate off all the cherries. As we go further on down the next base, I'll show you there. This is my blue out-of-seater arch. It's designed to arch my driveway. When it comes down, it frames my carriage. The arch is about 11 foot, 6 foot, tracker and barrel. Hoping to win 
to make a gateway. This is designed to frame my building as you come down the drive. Also, next element would be my, my gatehouse. It's a hedge it was giving me a lot of trouble. I had a lot of maintenance to it, so I tied it together with into a flat wall. I found these old windows and hung them on them. And I have a place for window boxes, but I do not have them on them. I apologize for that. my shower curtain door, I found home at night time, the sun from the west side of me shadows on the back side of the doorway, like rough me awful fun. And act one funny thing about it. When they stuck it in, the town inspectors came by and they thought I built it this building. As you can't close to it, and they realized there was a head in it. <laughs> Anyhow, follow me along. And please, no pets, bad kids, cigarette butts, leave them in your car, okay? Garden diplomacy, respect other people's garden. I, I always do something different to make people look at stuff like the nine is reverse, I'm dyslexic. So I talk about my design. I have a lot of lines in my building and I can tie my tree to the lines, horizontal lines and stuff, nice and even, but I frame it out around the edges and stuff like that. When you look come down the driveway, it looks different as you come by it, how it comes up and over around. You have to see it to understand it. I found these windows someplace, put them up and I framed the apple tree around the window, window box. Why not? My building inside goes down pretty deep. You can do this at home with your place. Why not? And plus I work with thirds as I build this building. This one third of the building has this plant on it. It's all framed up with my lines and stuff. And I have negative space for openness. It really needed to show off what I got. I have a raised bed that changes colors during seasons. Early spring to late fall. Why not? Why not? You can do this. The optical illusion of the height of one of its changes with building sites during the time of the year. Uh, there's a walkway here and it can take me back to my next element that on the back side and each side of my building looks different it depends how you look at it from this side it looks one way from the other side it looks different so I can show you how what it did each side is different well, let me know. I even have steps there and stuff this is the back side facing my neighbors so they always have spring flowers to my neighbor's wall facing my neighbor's house wall anyhow Let's move on to the next space. Okay, why not? See, it looks different from different angles. I, I keep it face nice and tight, as you can see. It doesn't come out, I keep it tight. And it really looks great. Okay, let's move to the next space. Come on, come on, let's go. One, two, one, two. Ha, ha. So I have a lot of different patterns of bricks here. This was left over from a patio out back. And it's an open box pattern. So when you look at it, it looks like open boxes according to different directions you're looking at it. And it's aimed to the front doorway. Make it come in and look straight to what you look at, the doorway, bring it in the house. But it's all recycled bricks from left over pile, okay? But you look at the house, right right on, okay? I like lines. It takes you, I control the garden floor of traffic. It invites you into the house, okay? So this is the front entryway. I, I tend to use a lot of recycled materials. I found these old posts. Uh, I cut off the dead wood and capped them with wood and box routed it and even put birdhouses on them. Right? I have all these Johnny Wrens will come back each year. Each summertime they go back and have babies in the same pot. Uh, and vines and a bunch of flowers annual comes up each year spring fall and summer uh why not good smells and stuff plus i also use uh, different types of textures and stuff old fine different seasons and stuff and i put all all my tropicals in the in the ground as you can see my north brook island pine my palm tail palm here and stuff why not you can do that too yes pop them in the ground and the mother nature take care of them uh-huh it looks great and you know nobody knows the difference but you and i <laughs> this is a bell that my grandmother gave me at a wedding it came from a home homestead in quarryville it's connected to the top as you see it rings a bell on top they have the sun dial there that i made it's off time some so also i did a lot of stuff like leveling off and stuff around here, doorbell like this, making a, especially a tight space 
I can put a spire tree there, when it's three inches thick, but it takes up the whole space, nice and small. Pretty nice, pretty nice. And in a way, how I covered up the utilities and stuff, electrical box and stuff, it's high hit down there and stuff, and see it, venting and stuff. We're gonna have venting, like venting and stuff. And also found a piece of plexiglass, keep order with it to go off, down, stuff. And what are my plants? Why not? Why not? And lighting is another issue you gotta deal with at nighttime. So I do a lot of birdhouse lighting, down lighting. It highlights my plants, and it, it's not in your face, shines right on the bricks and stuff like that and there's another one there lights plugs and faucets let's move on let's move on <laughs> This section of a nursery is my garden, is my nursery, my container stock. All this plant material I propagated in my basement window, not even knowing I could do this as I was building my shop. I worked for a landscaper down the main line and I always would bring home cuttings in my lunch bag or my lunch box, my coffee cups, whatever you call it, happy hour cups. Anyhow, and some of these is 10 years old. I don't know why people don't encourage using dwarf carnival for hedges. Low maintenance. Some people like to trim a lot, I guess. And the things I incorporated into my garden nursery was my irrigation system. I heat my house with a geothermal heat pump, and when I heat my house or I cool my house with my well water, I can discharge it through my irrigation system or else my, my fountains, as you will see. I have to tap into my fertilizer, throw my fertilizer and everything at one time wise. It comes on at 4 o'clock in the morning, and everything's done by we take showers by 8 o'clock in the morning. Every day, whatever I program. Also, at this point is where I keep all my, my dwarf aquatic plants. This is my spittle. He erupted out of my basement one time. His eyes glow. And this sound, this water sound, is a nice welcoming sound. All my fountains have different sounds for different effects, with different moods that makes the garden. Like I said, this is all my aquatic plants and uh, all this stuff is totally all hardy over winter, but one or two ones that I throw in my fountain in my conservatory at winter time. And it, this was made out of a, a, a tube of GE coke that fell on my floor, got stuck in my sawdust, and it, it erupted out of it. And he'd been spitting for the past four years. And my honeybees would stand on it and drink the water when he drips, when he drools a lot. There's a lot of espalier and a nursery stock, young espalier, as you can see. This area I call my squirrel pond area. I found all this marble in Philadelphia in front of a dumpster. One night it happened back in my board of BW. And it makes sparks all coming back to school field. The next day I went back to the second load, they dumped a whole big dumpster full. What a waste. People are so wasteful in America. I also, for this area, this is a high energy sound, okay? This is one of my sounds, water sound. Water sound is different from a speaker sound. The speaker sound you can control to what mood and what timing. This is a conch law sound. Sound for my Paramecyphrius Boulevard walls. I put them up to my eating carrots. Way, 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 way up behind you. A couple steps up the hill time. Now, this is a high energy sound. It makes people move. It echoes how I have my I begin in the wall, uh, a reflecting chamber of sound. I also use down lighting. My birdhouse light comes down shines up on all my white marble at nighttime. This is a very true nighttime garden. I stage it with lighting and sound effects. And these tubes, as you see at the very corner of the pond, are hooked up to my geothermal heat pump. When I'm heating my house with my well water, I can always cool my house. I can discharge it through my fertilizer system and fountain, as I was saying, or through my fountain in the hill. And I also have all my water from the south side of my house drain pipe, all channel into one area, dumped into this pool area here. From this point, it overflows into my other new area, my bog area, where I keep my carnivorous plants and where I breed my mosquitoes at. Follow me along. My bog area. And my surprise element is when you walk on these planks, they sag down in my soil line. My soil line is only... It's amazing how many people don't like to walk on uneven ground. And you can't fall off. It's like we like the soil line and uh, there's carnivorous plants on either side, but they won't bite you. They just plants. <laughs> Why not? People don't know the difference. At nighttime, it's always fun and spooky and kind of slippery too. But there's a liability bullshit. But don't worry about it. It's just for fun. Just for fun. Why not? If you move to the next spot, I can point something out to you that everybody should have places in the garden and go and sit. Why not sit and have a cup of tea? Why not? Until you know, go to the next spot. You and everybody got to thank God for a good day we had. You know how it is. Yes, let's go to the next spot. Yes, why not? <laughs> I used to have a lot of paths in, in the springtime. This is such full of bulbs, very fragrant, close up to my eating carrots. And I don't have that much fall bulbs yet. 
but I have not that much native wood plants in this area of the garden. So much fun, I'm blessed with the opportunity to have fields and walkways up and down. It invites you to different areas. And I, I also do a lot of SBA uh, plants up trees because you want them. It's so easy. Uh, Gaiety or whatever it is, one of those cuttings you got from some landscape and junk. And I, I stable it to the trees and they, they root on once you get stapled in pretty well. It's amazing. A good effect, this is my transition line of my garden between my house unit and my nursery and my garden area. I do a lot with euonymus. I had a lot of line upward to my paint brush and this painted on. A lot of brightness. This is my wood leftover from my loop house. It's my hard hammock. And I have a bad back and the, the ropes are really nice and tight and really almost flat, almost like a table for my back. It's nothing but old scraps and you know, recycled. And this is another good area I really like. A lot of people really like this area. Uh, I found this old cow talk from my father's barn. I was always throwing it away, so I got it. I put up, uh, brought it to the tree, and the birds love it. We, I wedge two stones into the trees, and the birds come and eat all the birds and stuff. We can watch. It's designed. Ever my garden is designed from looking out my house window. All my windows focus to my garden, uh, vistas and stuff. All from my eating terrace in my bathroom. I always brush my teeth, and I, I wedge these stones in the tree, and people will come up and sit down in this nice moss cover area, nice and moist, and they, they would see this pipe and they could never figure out where it comes and they, then, then they look up and, and I call this my falling pipe area. They look up and look at this pipe and they get up for some reason and they walk out of the area really quickly for some reason. <laughs> uh, this is still an end of my uh, woodline area. This is my Lancaster County simulated cow flops, unscented. See, you can pick them up and that doesn't even stink. But my peacocks always eat my dead flies with also in this area is back to design wise and lighting. That birdhouse light above me that cascade this nice white light on my mobile that spins around in the wind that designed to look out from my kitchen window I can see the thing moving around and my surprise element is it's hanging up there like as if it's ready to fall on top of somebody. It's all for fun. It's a surprise element. <laughs> Oh, oh, and something else. I keep all my holes underground. I have over a hundred foot of holes underground here in this. I have two thirds of a 50 gallon drum. And I can keep pulling it out, pulling it out, pulling it out, and I can push it back in. And I never run over with my lawnmower. And I can inject fertilizer into my water supply and the whole bit. And the way I get water out to here, I have a, a good exterior hose, uh, ultraviolet ray resistant, right under my side. Same as my irrigation system, as we saw further back in my nursery end of the, my place. It's so nice, you can hide your hoses and all your mechanics. And, and only the secret is, at winter time, you must drain the ends of the hose so it does not freeze. My area is zone 6. Uh, if the wood can do a lot of damage to your brass ends of it. But if you just drain it, turn it off, dries out good, man. Something else, I've been telling you, I've been having troubles with my cock in my garden. He's been ro roaming too wild. This drives him nuts. And see what he did? I have these mirrors hung up every place around there. Broke off seven mirrors in my mobile, which I will point out as we go forward along. And no wonder, no, seven mirrors is like 49 years of bad luck. No wonder I'm getting out of this space. Uh, this is the fifth one he broke this year on these as we go further along. And this is to my maize area. I decided since I have to mow the hillside, why not only do half of it? So I did half of it. It took me only 15 minutes to gnaw it out from the same, but I cut my time in half, uh, gasoline wise and time wise. Now I have more time to drink my gin at happy hour. So follow me, follow me along. It's a quick jaunt. Come on. We're almost there. Come on. This is my maze area. It's very, it's all for fun. It makes you aware of foot eye coordination, especially you bouncing as you go up and down the hill. First half of the hill is quite easy. And the second, I'm going to make the makeup run, people are sweating. Anyhow, I'm going to do this very quick. Follow me along, but no cheating. This is all for fun. No hopping the path. So come on, I'm going to make this very quick. Oh, that dead end. There's a lot of dead ends in this one, too. You exit at this point, but I'm not there yet. And this is where I've begun at. Now I'm still going. I'm about halfway done now. <laughs> this is an awful fun. Yes, it is. See, oh, wrong, wrong way.
liquid exercise. Ta-da! Nothing to it. Well, right, let's continue to the other parts of the garden. Hate to rush you along, but we have to. This is a round garden. My design was to make it round. I, I planted a lot of gray foliage on top. Design-wise, it was bad. It makes it look green. All this area drains into my reservoir for my fountain. All this stuff is recycled. I have two power supplies, one for lighting, one for fountains, in the east zone throughout my garden. This is my peacock shoot, as you see. I, was, I told you I was having trouble with my cock. My cock was going rampant. He was beating all these mules up. He broke out seven mules. He would fly up, he would walk on top of my hedge, get it all busted down. Now he doesn't like this, he keeps off pretty well. He will fly up on my person head. All my statues is non-sexual. So more people would like him and squeeze, squeeze him or whatever they want to do to him. And this is my peacock hat that keeps my peacock barber hat from landing on top and then he breaks out my mobile. He, I, like I said he broke out nine, seven mobile, seven mobiles last year. I mean, that's a lot of bad luck man. What, 49 years of bad luck? No wonder I'm getting out of this space. But you know, all these bricks I found and all this stuff I propagated in my basement. Uh, my thistle is on the way out. A giant silver thistle. It, it was a pie but it got too wet. We had a wet summer this year. Quite lucky thank God. Also, when the light shines through my uh, mirrors and crystals, it throws rainbows back way up through my house, up my driveway. As people come in, they get rainbows across the face and the eyes. And I always tell them, make a wish. You have nothing to lose if the rainbow or reflection hits you in the back of your eye. And the amazing thing enough is, I got a lot of thank you cards from people that came true. So you have nothing to worry about. Make a wish. <laughs> it might come true, it might not. And also, I have up lighting that shines up on these at nighttime and reflect these beams of light floats around and almost like laser beams are very trivified. Ooh, very nice, really nice. Very messes with your eyes, it catches you off guard and they float around next to you and up over objects. This person that I was making a, a trough, hyper triple trough, I guess it might might have been too drunk. It wasn't mean, it was one full moon, you know how it goes, full moon can be. Anyhow, it turned out to be a person, head, an arm and a foot, and another arm. So it's a person I'm painting it black with tree paint and Take what you want them up to the center of it and it's growing. I face it twice a year and this was left over from some Halloween donation. <laughs> Let's go to the next element. Okay, come on, follow me along. This is on the way to my other terrace. Uh, as you see, I put this design in the grass. It zigzags down to one vocal point. My vocal point is my corn stalk. Mother Nature planted it for me. So follow me along. This is my series of topiaries. I have a lot of geometric shapes and designs. This is my double corkscrew. I have single corkscrews along, and it's for like formal vocal points. Uh, I have many different designs, and all of these I propagated in my basement without even knowing it. This is a ball with some type of animal on top, probably some type of chicken. And I have a series of geometrical shapes. I have four sided ones, five sided ones, three sided ones two-sided ones, even one one one-sided one. And some of them I do not know what they are. I just play around with. And this is probably be uh, some type of bird and a bunch of eggs. Uh, I haven't got eyes or lips on them yet. Uh, this is a single screw. And this is one of my series of my three-sided geometrical shapes. And this was going to be a cowboy on the ball. He's like a cowboy having a ball. This is his legs. This is the cock shot. And uh, eventually he will grow up as you get big, tall. You uh, in your garden. Uh, this will be a cowboy, as a, and this will, this is for the lovers. You should already have a place for the lovers to go and do whatever they want. Uh, this is a more of a vocal point. Aesthetically, it's like the point you look at. And let's walk along. And this is for the people like mutts or like dogs. I haven't got his eyeballs on them yet, or his big happy lips yet. But he can still wag his tail. <laughs> but I, and also, I have making a series with him with little uh, crotch benches. Benches, benches that go between the crotches. You can come up and then you can sit down on and do whatever you want. <laughs> Anything you want. And this is all for fun. And he's holding his two martini glass. And here's a bird with a bird. Here's a bird with a bird with a bird on top. And I've been doing a, a lot of series of obelisks. Obelisk is a point, a vocal point in a garden with, with straight edges. 
But a lot of guys, a lot of guys I talk to, they, they think this is a penis series. But now it's obelisk or focal point. Uh, different birds, and these, some of these birds should be able to sit on. You go for a ride, uh, have fun, or tickle your tail, whatever. And this is my dead giraffe. I couldn't even plant his uh, body, the rest of his feet, so I let him stick him up. I always get the biggest laugh from that. And like I said, some of these you get very comfortable. You can sit on, you have a group party, a group gathering, you can do whatever you want to anybody next to you and do whatever you want. <laughs> But here have nice big sexy eyes. Maybe some eyebrows, I don't know, who knows. And if you come further along, you can see some other stuff. This is a, one of, another one of my geometric shape. This is one of my three-sided one. Great for shadows and an illusion within gardens. For the elements of surprise and good, good structure in a garden. Like a, a firmness, like a, a, a wall, something that adds strength. With opening, it does different, but with a solid piece, it does a lot. And if you walk along, I have all these other ones. Uh, here are one of my favorite one. Here's one of my biggies. This is another one. I don't have eyes or lips on them yet, but this is the one you can come up and uh, sit on and get laid on, whatever you want to get done with, you know? But he's a, be a happy one when you can finish, finish up with him. Uh, and my other ones is like, uh, all for fun. I even have some with serious with breast. A lot of people like big ones. So some of them have them, you can't, probably can't tell because of the shadows of the lighting on some of these, but uh, like I said, all these are all for fun, you mean, all for fun, man. <laughs> What can I say? And also on the other side of this row, I can point some other ones out to you. Follow me along this way. And on this side is my smaller seats, my series for the for the kids. They can sit down on them and stuff. And this one will be one you can climb through if you wanted to. And this one will be a one you can sit on down with a heart in it for, for those levels effect and stuff. But it's all for fun. And like I said, this is kids would like to climb through these for some reason. It's all for fun. And some of these medium sides with parents, they can happen. Especially ones like to drive around a lot, they're gonna go. Like I said, there'll be eyes on them eventually. I have different types of seats and stuff. So let's go back to uh, some other places as we walk along the garden. Here you can see. And here's another one of my seats. Be able to sit, sit down on and stuff. You know, why, why not? This seat is a you seat. A seat for you. <laughs> Hit the punchline. Okay, so follow me along to the next spot. Like I said, all these is only for fun. It's all for fun. Why not have a trip where you can go and sit on and have somebody on to next to you, you can do whatever you want with them and they can be very nice uh, some of them you know, have bigger eyes and lips and can't even wave like it used to I broke it off by mistake with the pruning, bad pruning practices anyway let's move on this is one of my geometric series and so here are some of my birds that stick on wagon's feathers some <laughs> was designed to put a sign another sign, self supporting sign for your business uh, must mostly color on the color green or blues of the color but this will be wrapped to these to make it even square and this sign will be sandwiched under that. Animals or people. And uh, anyway, Apollo, let's go up to the terrace. I'm babbling on too much. I'm sorry about that. This is on the way to my one of my main terraces. Uh, all this stuff's been recycled. Uh, some of this color clashes, but it's all for fun. I rearrange it once a year or twice. You know how gardeners can be. This way, please. This is my terrace. This is where I, I recycle my wood. All my swell drains into this pool and fills self-filling. I do not fill this pool, it fills itself. My speakers is under my slate, up two inches above my swell line so they do not flood out when they get a heavy rain. I only play classical music out there to give this uh, an air of like a snobby. And this is all for fun. And some of my surprise element is all through my area, I have areas that my slate that rock. The uneasiness again to make people uneasy. This color de design is used to be fast food color. I took out the yellow. It was ye black, yellow, and red. Nobody would stay on this because everybody would walk off because of the color. This is really like a masculine color. This is the way I turn up to be. I use bold objects like leaves and this. I'm a strong believer in happy hour. You must sit down and thank God for a good day and happy hour be before you begin second shift. Well, I guess it's getting pretty wet. I can show, show this. I don't know. I use Lighting in my can, I all gallon junk they found, glass ones. I glue them on a piece of old rods like a can and give them to me 360 degree lighting. All my area's surface light is lit up so people can see where they walk. I stage my elements with uh, drinking utensils as you see, either wine glasses, tea cups, whatever. But I, like I said, I live in my garden, I do not look at it like some people do. And my grasses is set so that it's back with my afternoon sunlight. I'm only enjoying my garden at nighttime when I'm eating. In the morning I'm up and I'm out before I even know what's happening. 
because I have to pay the bills like everybody else. Just like you, you know how it is. When the sun comes across, the sun really highlights these grasses and make them glow. And as they open up and be all fluffy, they just like lights on them at night time, at sunset. My sunset is on the wood line up there. Okay? It makes a lot of difference when you backlit plants. The plant just glows with the hideous colors of these yellow ones and these dark ones. We oh, just do a lot. Uh, all my plant, uh, plants I leave out all winter long. I do take my cannons and, and this, my elephant ears and my banana trees. I put them in, in my basement or my main level on my console. Yes, that's, all, that's pretty all over this area. Uh, this is my main vocal point on my house. And I tell you a good story. When they stuck my, I dug this all out, I stuck in my three layers of block, 24 inches high, my pool is. All cement blocks I found in the dump. I knocked up the cement, leveled them out, put all the rock, and lined it with the roof material. Then I put it my slate down. But when I was brushing my teeth in the morning, behind you, where you're looking from, is looking out my bath, bathroom window. And this pool was not centered between my trees. So next week I came out, I lifted up all my slate, I drained my pool, took out my lining, took out all the fish and stuff, and moved over eight inches until it was centered between my trees. Now it's centered. Now all my pots, and all in the containers, I can move them around to what's blooming. So I always put any flowers that are blooming I can see from a bathroom window. Why not? It's made to be movable. You never should get stationary in life, you end up being stagnant and gleaming. So it's best to get around and do as much as you can and why not try something different? Why not move it around? You know, color-wise. Then also, when I put, put my slate back down, I tried and I, I when I put my lines of slate in, it wasn't straight line in my bathroom window. It will be nuts. I used to be a carpenter. Anything was straight line. That's why I have, I'm, I'm really good in hardscaping, the hard mechan mechanics of an element. Anybody can put colors down. Uh, reds or yellows or any type of plant material. But I like, like I said, I like to clash different colors. I like to make people see, you know, why not? You know, it, it makes my day when they come up to me and tell me, simple, it's a hideous color. It makes me day because they see something they never saw before, colors, textures, and elements like that. You take, you, people take it for granted. They take so much for granted. So anyhow, let's move on to my next space, please. And also, as I say, you see, I always have, I stay in my, my, my place with stuff you can enjoy, whatever you like to. This is the best thing. This is my, one of my claim to fame, my next element. Come along and join me. This is all for fun. It is. <laughs> Like I said, I have a lot of many different great elements. Uh, you go down, but you go up again. It's all for fun. But this is my next, my claim to fame. To good health. That's all you need. You don't need no money, but good health. Good health, you can do anything. Anyhow, this is my Conus Cusa bow. My surprise element is when those lovers come up this way, or well, any way they come, they usually sneak around anyhow, you know how the lovers can be. They come back, they come over here to this tree, and they on this white piece of slate, they can stick the camera there and put in a 10 second timer. It takes them 8 seconds to walk from that point after they push it, to engage it, they come over, and get next to the level and do whatever they want movement they want to do and as they sit down on the eighth and ninth second 
my surprise element is when my seat it finds people, it pitches your cheeks, and they give them a great, great expression. <laughs> this is all for fun. No uh, uh, cheek creases or nothing like that. Anyhow, follow me to the next element. But this corner cruiser, it was all loaded with white flowers. You can see how heavily fruited it is. I have. But I've, they've been blooming for just the ninth week. Oh, you can't see the flowers on that side. But anyhow, all this fruit, be, actually, is quite edible. You make jams and stuff out of it. I don't really like it. It always gets stuck to my mustache. And let's go over the next element. Follow me along, please, okay? okay. And this next element is a, quite a new one. It's not that old. Uh, it's a good laugh. Follow me along. Okay. We're almost there. You know how it is, you get stuff too far apart. Come on, we, we almost stuck. Come on. I'm sorry about rushing you along, but that's how I am. <laughs> this is to my facade. Uh, I like to encourage people to use more uh, backdrops. My backdrop in this area is my male hedge, a male holly hedge. I do not like berries. For example, a long garden, new section, they have this dragon eye holly. Nice plant, very nice plant. Nice thick heads keep up the damn kids a whole bit. But the fruit clashes with some of the colors of the perennials. Anyhow, this hedge is only uh, that width of a 2x4 when, it, when it's face down tight. I apologize, I didn't get a chance to face it down nice and tight, which I should have. This is a regular juniper I have it up to soften my corner there. It in invites you in. So come on in this area. That, that blue holly I can key off on many different colors of blues and greens and yellow. Mostly blues and grays. This area is very a lot of grays. I found all the old top full top slate full top tables that's thrown away. Two five by nines and one four by eight. This is a very uh, intense moonlight garden. When the full moon's out glows because of my backdrop of the dark bluish holly. It really highlights my lambs this plant down here. And it's a really a hot dry microclimate. And also I have would be my water element. And this is another of a pond spittle. Uh, he just recycles and you can see my honeybees drinking off of them. As you can see there. Shoo, shoo. Oops, I didn't mean. And my fish and frogs eat my dead bees that get washed down. And you can see some of my fish floating around. I should feed them, but I usually don't. Uh, they, they eat all my bug control. I also place to sit. Uh, all my garden have places you can sit down on, as you saw as you came through. You must have a place to sit. Sit down on. Uh, I have a bad back, so. I use this gun a lot, or lay down, or hopefully get laid, or be laid, I don't know. It must be big enough to stretch out. And I also, I have no electrical lights up here. I have two power supplies, one for lights if it wanted to, one for pumps. I also have a water supply. But my lighting would be, I just got these all gown jugs and stuff, floats candles in up top of them. It gives me a 360 degree lighting for liability, people who can walk where you're going. Especially max my pores, Nighttime elevation of my drop off, people won't step in my pool and do damage to my plant material like some of the idiots does. And also, something you should very really key on if you have a place to sip, sip on your iced tea, whatever, you just have nice fragrant plants around uh, in the morning and evening. Oh, this oh, smells, you know, like a nasty lady in front of you in church, you know, the worst smell like honeysuckle. Or this is the same smell, and it's right, it, the whole area smells. So. I have different types of clematis. I have spring blooming ones, summer blooming ones, and fall blooming ones. Why not have a sequence of flowers and different colors and textures? Why not? So each time of the year you have different colors. And these two trellises and the two walls of my facade that will be next is was in the Philadelphia Flower Show. Show a couple years ago. Uh, the walls. I when I clean out my garage, I have all this debris left over and I made a roof structure out of it. And I kept one of my miscanthus I can't even grasp since I put up there. Uh, I have this funny story to tell you. When I cut my grasses, the funniest thing I ever did in my garden was when the National Herb Society came to my garden and my Miscanthus gigantium growth was almost up to the last year of flowers. But I painted the flowers the same color of my plant material and they labeled it Miscanthus gigantium latex rubro. That way some of this have red paint on it. It's, it was a, a it was all for fun. I have an SBA tree on the outside, that, and all these plants can tie, take hot, dry. This is a royal microclimate. So I'll, and something else, a feature I have is my. Uh, I have a wooding hose up here, so I, I, I have a wood supply. Oh, sorry, <laughs> you got me that time. Uh, that's a surprise element again. <laughs> Anyhow, this is I have a wood supply up here. Uh, my property line or the end of the garden would be a foot on this side of this trellis. Uh, this trellis is quite fragrant too. Also, come on inside, but please shut the door when you come through. But keep my flies out. 
point in. This is my facade. Amazing as you know, as you see, it's a fake building. Uh, you might say this is an open house. I have a lot of trouble with flies inside. I always tell people to close the door to keep up my fly. And all this stuff has been recycled from dumps and this and that. Uh, like I said, this is a nice place to lay down, a camp out, or get laid or be laid, whatever you want. Uh, this is all for fun. A uh, garden is a place to enjoy yourself and make love in. Uh, because it's a love of plants what does it. So let's continue on to my next space. Let's go off the way we came in so I have other stuff to point out to you. Okay? Quick sometimes. And this, I want to show you something else. You might get a good laugh with this. Follow me along. Aren't they nice colors? Oh, it's so nice and cool. Especially with this color and this contact. And that. And also, something you might get a good laugh from. I show you how I pollinate my hollies. I have bees. My bees, I keep up way out away from the public, so they won't get stung. I've been trying to get bees to put honey directly into the jars. As you can see. I don't know if you can focus on that much or not, but I don't know how close you can get. But anyhow, it's awful fun. I was trying to get the bitter man out. Anyhow, let's continue on. My garden is pretty close together, but for some reason it takes a long time to go different places. This is another I'm going to head into it in different areas, different rooms, for the love was to go again. Follow me along. <laughs> We're almost to the corner. Aren't these fruit and knockout? Look at them. Nice, bright, sexy red. Great Christmas decorations. <laughs> Come on, corner. Amazing. I don't know where the pumpkin came from, but it must be left over from Halloween. Mother Nature gave it from Halloween. Anyhow, let's go to the next element. I have different ways to go in a different place. Like this one is for love was again. They can come up and you have to enter through my heart. I mean, I mean, how often you get a, a piece of heart as you go through? This is one of my Cryptomeria rooms. I call this Cryptomeria Rotundra because it have a, a round top to it. Come on in. This is the lovers who like this place. They get, they do a lot up here. You go in here with a ooh and an ah. <laughs> Come on in. It's made. You can come in and sit down, relax, have your wine or. Do whatever you want to do in here, you know. Some people do a lot of different things. Uh, but this is, I apologize how it's really sloppy in here. You know, it's lit by candlelight and it's really private and it's really nice and cool. It has a round top inside of it and you can, it's hard to see anybody inside of it. Anyhow, to good health, click, click. Takes it off. Now let's go to the next spot. Okay. And Perhaps if that room's filled up, I'll take you another room. It's more for the party gathering. It's pretty close. Come on. This is one of my favorite trees. This sweet bag magnolia. Nice fruit on it. Nice Christmas decoration when you dry them. Very fragrant. Spent lemon. And it's a choice, choice plant. And then again, you never find them 10 foot tall. These are my babies. We're almost there. I guarantee you get a good exercise in my space of time. <laughs> Come on. And I don't know why people don't use conifers for head. This is a nice yellow texture. And eventually it's bright gold and it'll be one solid head. On my height, it was only this high, height. Let's go back. And here, this is another Cornish Crusa. This is for my party seat. For boop boop set, sitting for four people or more. And eventually it's be like a canopy. And as you see, all this fruit has been lot of packed full of flowers. And this is also another element that is made, made for a light to hang inside of it. And there's a sphere within a sphere. Uh, eventually it'll be uh, much wider. So I should carry on. It'll be almost at my next element. This is my Cryptomeria tower. I'm, I'm ready to put an upstairs on this. I wanted this to be a tower. This is located on a high point in my garden. Eventually it'll be the highest. A good place to go in there and get high or overlook the garden if you want. I was hoping to put an upstairs on this, but I can add in this space and time. I propagated all this plants in my basement, not even knowing it could get this high and turn into a, a unique element like this. This is the only one of the kind, a lot of the specimens, most likely you will never see so much collection in one area or one unit. So let's go inside, okay? Follow me along, please. This is the entrance of the way. Come on in, follow me in. 
for some reason, this place is always so nice and cool. All the cold air comes in, the bottom goes up. It acts like a chimney. I never knew it until when the kids from Longwood, the young internship, pointed out to me. One hot day, everybody was huddled inside out of the sunlight, acting as a chimney updraft. Everybody got all that all nice and cool. Also, you know, this is a place to come take a smoke, or they like to smoke, or even have some uh, drinks. I think you should always enjoy your garden space. You know, some people don't, some people do. But I do. And this is to the cameraman, a good man, Jeff, and to me. Uh, ah. <laughs> yeah, well, since, you, since you can't drink this, Jeff, so I have to. <laughs> Thanks for helping me. Good help. <coughs> Excuse me. Also, I have oh, <coughs> all these. <laughs> Excuse me. All these simulated lights, fake lights. You should, you should never put legs, lights next to your knees. Why do you induce? Mosquitoes next to your legs and bite your crotch the whole thing. You don't want that nonsense. But I do use candle lights. This plant, oops, oops, this plant of candles that you see. <laughs> this is nice low lighting for the vibe. This bricks is left over my front wall. We, I wish I put it upstairs on this so you could go up and overlook the garden and go up and get laid or be laid. I get this thing about being laid, don't I? I don't know why. Let's move on to the next spot. I also have in my garden have different areas you can go and sit down and relax. This is my spoken area, I call it. But if you're following me along, you might get a laugh. Then again, you might not. Come along, please. I usually, in this area, I usually have an ashtray with a simulated marijuana joint and a plastic bag with some cuttings of this plant in it and a roach clip to simulate this is a, a illegal plant that shouldn't be in the States. And then I have more drinking areas here and there. Good health, man. Come along, we, we are almost done going to do the loop, but there's a couple more areas you just think about sitting at the relaxing time. Come on, come on. I don't end up making any sense, I must be drinking too much. You have to go this way. All through my car, garden, I have surprise elements in the Like this tree was falling down with one heavy snowstorm. I just nailed a big nail into this, spending up my walkway. And everybody thinks this hanging with by this little trick there. And it's all a surprise element, but it's safe. I always have these little creatures hanging around and greet people. They can bang their head into a, to leave some hair marks when they hit the scalp. <laughs> Whatever. Anyhow, let's move on. I always stick stuff on trees. Like this stuff. Why not? A vocal point. People don't realize from a distance you see it and they do not know what it is. What are they? They ask me. I always tell them they're simple creatures. I don't know. Anyhow, as we walk along. But these, I really like these animals. It had a good line to this tree. Why not hang mobiles or objects and move through the wind? Your garden should come to life mechanics of the wind, lightning. Well, you don't want lightning. The wind the movement, the chimes, the sounds. When I was chopping down this tree, this tree was full of flying squirrels. I kept the ends of them and I imported uh, flying squirrels to my place. I don't know if it was good or bad. Uh, I'm probably going to regret it. But they do a lot of damage inside. Like I said, you have places you can sit down, uh, hit, eat some crackers and cheese and have a cup of coffee or tea. But you know, why not live in the garden? You can even lay down and get laid on it if you're lucky. Oh, you make it a brush burn, because I will a wood burn or rock burn. <laughs> Let's go along to the next spot. In this woodland area, I have a lot of springtime bulbs. I don't know, I don't know how many. I have bulbs spanning over mixing of times. I have early bulbs spanning, spanning with my late bulbs. Earlier, and my later bulbs bloom later so they can overcome the old growth of flowers. Also, when you design a woodland area, everything is pretty well I can see through my woods. I do not like to chop my trees that God gave me out of my space. I limb up, yes. You, you frame elements as you look through a different area. By just by lines of trees and the angles of the limbs, put your eyes to where really you focus. And also, don't be afraid to put like my my movable stuff. This stuff, it's quite movable. I can move it around any place I want for a vocal point. It's designed now from, when you look out of my kitchen window, centered between these trees. Why not? You can do anything you want. Don't never say never. Give it a try. And this is a place for my, my birds to drink out of, my peacocks and my squirrels. Let's go. We're almost at my next element. It's a it's a quick chant, okay?
And I also have other elements. When you create a garden, you should put something to teach yourself for different times of the year. Like for me, I like to know when it's windy out or not windy out. Or when I look out my windows, my vocal point in my house, my kitchen and my bathroom window in the morning and nighttime. This is my pointer. This is where I, it points which way the wind going into the wind. When, it, when no leaves is on the trees, I always point in the windiest side so I know which way and which way how to protect myself at winter time. So let's move mosey on up. We're almost there. And every garden should have a place you can go and thank God or have some kind of constant force to watch over your space of time. I'm lucky. I'm blessed with something about people helping me out. I do not know if a deal or whoever does. Thank God for people like that. And yeah, this is my good luck card. This is how you get good luck. Follow me and think. This is my good luck card. Everybody come and sit in here and get good luck. I don't know what kind of good luck. Make it lucky or whatever. Thank God you get lucky. Everybody will come in and line up and they will come in and and get good luck from these the horseshoes. But the only thing is, they don't know. They think they're getting good luck, but it's nothing but rust ball on top of the head. Give them iron or whatever. I have up lighting that shines up these trees at nighttime and make a big energy field that comes up like, like at the bottom of a spaceship. And it's one of those science fiction movies, you know how they call it. This light, you know, especially in the misty light, really does a lot for this little space area. But let's go to my next space. Follow me along, please. So we should go to my next element. It's a quick jaunt. Thank God for good exercise and good health. So we walk along this way and who knows what, what will come with the space is coming. Some people like it and some people don't. Follow me along. This element is quite strange. Some people like it and some people really get offended of that. This is all for fun, believe me. It's just my, my wording, wording person. It just recycles. It just recycles, I mean. My reservoir is quite small. It, it splashes. The design, you can see him like taking a leak, but it doesn't. But the, you know, the funniest thing about it is when you tickle him any place you like, he spits. See? And I must say, when the National Herb Society, he been tickled, yanked, and pulled every place you can be imagined. It brought those, some of the old ladies back to life. You know, this is awful fun. Some people don't like this, but some people, you know, and some people don't. You know, you can even rub him. He, he actually likes some. <laughs> it's awful fun. But he listens. You tell him not to spit. He does not spit. Good person. Like I said, he's non-sexual, so more people like him. My wordering tree right here. And my wordering tree is, you always get these bad kids that come to your garden. One doesn't listen. The one you could, oh, he duck, take, take a big oak tree and take your mouth shut. And here, yeah, this gives them the, the wet crotch syndrome. When the kids turn it on, <laughs> see, I, I told you, it gives them the wet crotch syndrome. But this, I throw this tree once a week, once or twice a week, I don't know, not all the time, but it's nice to wash off your feet a whole bit. Uh, I can eject fertilizer with this zone if I wanted to, but this is all for fun, all for fun. Um, you know, why not have a spigot on a, a tree where you can water your plants by? Nice and easy, you know. Don't be a fool. You don't have time to drag hoses around. So I stuck a hose in there, I mean, a uh, spigot in there, and I've used it ever since. I also have lighting. I have side lighting up there. See it in the distance above my tree. And I also have a birdhouse speaker that I can control the sound of this element. You should always control sound in your element. I can I can operate up to five different zones of sound or five different moods of sound. This is on the way to my my playhouse. At this area, I have all my dwarf carnivores. That's, some of them is uh, pretty old, but they is getting big. And this pond just recycles water. It's a nice, easy, soothing sound that echoes up to my bedroom sound. Anyhow, let's go to my, my loop house. It's this way. I have a lot of native plants in this area, a bark area under my these big leaf plants. And anyhow, let's go inside one. Anyhow, this is my, my playhouse. I call this my playhouse. I play in it. Do I play with it myself? I do all my propagation in there. I, this is my propagating beds. I do not heat this loop house. I do heat my bottom of my propagating bed, as you can see. I, I have a program, I have a heating cables under it, so I, I doesn't keep it, it doesn't freeze. I have these old insulation was left over from my house I was building. As you see, my peacock been eating it. Must be his diet of roughage that he needs. 
all my mixing system drains down so it doesn't freeze on me at all. This has been operating for five years. I still have the existing plastic on top of it since I put them up and they should not last five years. So I must have had a pretty good place. And also, somebody gave me a good idea, told me that you should have a collapsible propagating bench. And it's so easy and it, I found this on Heavy Trash Night. Oh, there's an ironing board. You can move it any place you want. And it down your, the bench rolls and stuff, and you have enough for two flats and a petting area. And it's so easy, light, you can no damage at all. I mean, like, so nice and so easy. Anybody can use it for a propagating bed. But anyhow, let's walk to my eating terrace and as we can finish up. The, we are all on the way to eating terrace. Come along. This is Joanne. This is a place to come up and do what she does here. Rub his tummy and make a wish of. Actually, I have one stop to go. Apologize. One. Oh, I have to apologize. I've been drinking a lot in my garden. My garden is a place to enjoy yourself, so I have to go to my outhouse. And also, my outhouse. This is sitting on top of a groundhog hole. My groundhog cleans out, cleans my hole out once a year. I'm lucky, aren't I? Excuse me. I I have to go. Oh, I dripped. Uh oh. Anyhow, it takes a long space to get to everything in my, my element. Yes, you know, why not? You should have a space for these lovers to go and grab or whatever they want to do next to each other, you know? And this is a heart-shaped one. I have backdrop with light, so it really highlights a hill where I also want to put in the sun. I apologize, the sun is turned off for the day, so we won't have to wash out of the colors. But follow me, I'm almost a couple steps away from the eating terrace. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Well, we're almost at my eating terrace, but on my way to my eating terrace is my Atomploid trellis. It's an illusion trellis. Illusion, the, the food eye, Atomploid, false port spectrum. My cock is in front of it for hours fighting itself. Something about mirrors and peacocks, especially the males. You know how vain males can be, you know, it's a real head trips. I made one of these up for the Wilmington plant sale auction at Real Plants at Longwood, and I kept one for myself just for the fun of it. It's all for fun. Three inches thick. Fun. And that the key is to pull off the illusion by right. You know, I, I tell you my mistake. I, this should be wider to smaller. Wider to small. I throw it small, I throw it wider. And give you a perspective and pulls your eyes too quicker and stronger. But from a, from a distance, it pulls off the illusion. When you use a mirror in a design, like you should never be able to see your, yourself or anybody else. You must see sky or the backdrop of, of the plant material. I don't know if you can see it or not. I hope you can. Let's go, come on, come on, let's go to eating terrace this way. It's always nice to use different textures of uh, foliage, like this big uh, Panasides, really contrasts with the fine texture of grass and my thin, thin leaf holly. Why not? I'm more a dimension of uniqueness. I don't know. It looks good, I think. And also, in my area, there's a lot of development. With a major production is in my wood area, I, yes, I do dig plants up from the wild. I think a lot of native native symphidiums and orchids would be a parking lot. What hell, we almost have the eating terrace. Please come along. And, uh, and something I really encourage people along the eating terrace, fragrant. These plants you can smell it through tape. Quite fragrant. You, got, you can smell it. This is in my eating terrace. Now this is my archway, entryway from one area from the south side. And I also have my stack box pattern brick. I cut all these bricks, many different patterns. Uh, I yellow ones. I cut twice. The red ones are cut twice and the black ones are cut four times. So within these units I had a lot of cutting to do. It was a pain in the ass but it was worth every minute of it. Now I also have different things I use with birdhouses. I have a birdhouse lighting that a woodpecker got into. And also in the other trees I have a bell that But over from the one side of my eating terrace, I have a stump. This is my movable stump. I can move my stump around with, with electric. I have enough of car to bring it out here if I wanted to. Sound makes moods and stuff. I can operate five zones within the space of time. The place I put my speakers, either in ground or in birdhouse speakers. My birdhouse speakers is back to the back side, up in the soffit, so you can't see it. It's very hard to see that one up there. And the one on this east side is very hard to see. Another one's over this way. And I guess pretty well, this is for my eating terrace. 
you should always have a good place to go and thank God for a good day. A happy hour, whatever you do. Everybody's different. Some people take a lot for granted. You should not. Horticulture is a love of plants for me. Anyhow, let's go inside. I can point out other elements of my shot. All my doorway have sounds. Either inside or outside. I can hear if people come in and go in. All my doorways, each has different sounds. I can tell. This is my, the, every house should have this element. This is my disappearing closet. I can have a closet, I can hide all my, my mess inside. Just throw everything inside and sweep it in there. And here, this is my movable hat rack. Put my, all my hat with lights on the whole bit. Whoops. And also, the, the best thing about the whole house is this area right here. This is my my dirt hole. I can sweep all my dirt right way down in the hole. And it goes in my waste of a basket on my basement top shelf down. I have sweep all my junk in there. I have closed up nice and easy. Oh, this wood came from the lot. Red oak. This is my self floor. I guess this is, you will call this a form of a trumpeloid illusion. Uh, I painted my floor. I, this is a third brick pattern I put on my floor. I had the herringbone, the woven one. This is a straight line. My, uh, firstly, my floor line would be level with the bottom of the step is here. Uh, and I painted all my wood floor in here, wood grain, for the second time. First, I took everything on an animation look. Because why not? Why not? I have a, I painted a, a, roof, a rug so when you dance and it doesn't get dusty. Um, and I took that long house a couple years ago and I kept this mantle, part with the lintel and the pot of the long house. And the first time I paid tax was 1706, which is a very old piece of American chestnut. So I was trying to scrub some trees out of these tree stumps and when they threw my protruding stones up top, it was quite green, a certain steam stone from Westchester area. But uh, I love, love to uh, have a fire, uh, drink my bottle, or whatever, drink it, make a whiskey. There was a place where I keep, uh, I keep all my wood at, on the fireplace. This is my wood shoe. Keep all my mess inside. Every house should have it. And also, this is a place where my, my neighbor's dog comes down, stumbles. He lives three houses up. He, stay, he goes in there and sleep all night long, then go running with Duran in the morning. All my morning is really feminine. Art no ball. It's downstairs. Upstairs is a very masculine. I'll point you. Other morning time. This, this is my display case. All the wood came from a lot. There's a big oak tree here. That all my display case, my road top desk, my morning, my windows, and my kitchen cabinets came from. I was hoping to stick pressed flowers. Oh, I call them dead flowers. People call them pressed flowers in my glass. From springtime to fall, all of my garden, I have a whole many telephone books of pressing plants that's being pressed and be used. And this, I, I can operate all my sounds through my garden, through my area here. I can operate five zones of sound through my garden at all at one time, if it chooses to. All this is in uh, all wood, focus roof row, regal, pop. I have, we have dancing lights when we dance. The mood lighting I call it again. And as you can see, my morning came up, my morning in this, morning in this room came up very feminine, very movement to it, art de voice. And you know, you don't have to spend money on uh, expensive life fiction. This is nothing but a piece of cardboard cut into a happy face and a pigtail light bulb. But uh, anyhow, let's go to the kitchen area, okay? This, this is my kitchen. I always like to hide them off of the device TV. Always, you always try to take the eye to it. You can hide it like this. And all this wood came from the lot. All this exterior wood is popular. And interiors, I have all oh, interiors of pop. I have a Koran countertop, and all my windows there was is Koran. It's they drip off. Oh, everything drips out. And copper. I did all this tinning. Uh, on this tinning, when the ox was dies, this copper. This was muric acid. This was ammonia, and this is vinegar. The oxidation. I used my good screwdriver, and I just nailed it this one evening. 
and I also incorporated lights inside. So at night time they will come on so I can see what you're getting out of it. So I got these from the drugstore in town, and these lights came from the old, old drugstore in town, which I also use copper in my morning area. Uh, all my kitchen area, each each room morning is quite different. I incorporated a crumb hole for my crumbs. I sweep all my crumbs now and the ants can't get to it. I found this piece of wood up in my father's pig pen. I think you should root on it. One mistake it was, first season I was in, the next spring all these funny little bugs hatched and it was dead in my screen but you should always have wood without bugs in it. And like all this wood came from a lot. The interior was all popular. Same as this. Same with my kitchen chair, the ceiling is pop, the same as this post. This is my face post. Oh, for fun. I left this on for the other stuff. Anyhow, let's go continue out to my conservatory this way. Uh, as you see, I have another type of sound. Amazing. You take a lot for granted. Sounds and lighting and smells. This way, please. This is my conservatory. It's self-sufficient. I do not heat it. It heats itself. Only way I can show people how it operates is by my mold. I have mortgage on top. When the height rises, the sun comes in and heats the concrete, and the height rises up. As it rises, it pushes across my bedroom ceiling and down the inner wall. I have a north double wall on the north side above my bedroom ceiling under my basement floor. I have a 55 tons of stones under my basement floor. I also in my stones I have this tongue made out of cement blocks. Go right under my geothermal heat pump. But I can tap my blow system into this tunnel and it's like 50 degree air all year long. Winter time and summertime. Free heat. Well, especially when it's 23 heat at 50 degrees, you know what you can't go wrong man. This is where I bring all my tropical plants that I have outside. A Trump Lloyd effect, an illusion of the trolls. The stucco. I have different layers of stucco, different colors that I carved into it. Ended up with this effect. It's okay. It could be better. It could be better. Uh, this side is more like a thump ploy. Another sound. This is more like animation. This side I use four different colors. Beige in the background, green outer layer, most of the exterior layer is brown, another color on top. So I carved into these for different colors and effects. Look like the Mickey Mouse house. See it or not. As I was saying, I was trying to make a trumploid effect. All my lines focus to this, and this is a trumploid. And you come over this way, you can look into this mirror and see my reflection says it all. See what it says. One point. And with this illusion, when people come and go, they always look into my reflection and what it says, it says it all to me. I must say, I really encourage people to come. They always leave with good luck, some way, when they leave my space. They might have learned something, now they know how to try something new they never did before. And if so, they can take along some good luck. Yes, good luck. Doesn't everybody need good luck? Yes. Can't have it like this. All your good luck runs out. It has to be like this. So anyhow, I guess until next time, glad you enjoyed this space and time. Please drive safety. Remember the laws. Don't drink and drive. It's a good health. Thank you for coming to this space and time. So, have a safe journey as you move on to your space. Enjoy what you learn. May some of this carry on and please give out what you learn, if you may. This was a quick space and time. This space has even been 10 years of my life. Let's imagine the next years. Goodbye. Good health, man. Within the space and time you've been at, I hope you can learn about horticultural art. To me, what you saw is horticultural art. It can be anything from trellises, lattices, surprise elements, trompeloid, anything. Anything you can want. Why not? To me, is the love of the love of horticultural the love of, oh, love of horticulture art can be horticultural art. No, no, I blew it. I blew it. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you came and enjoyed my space at time. It's been a good space. I must say, what you saw is my definition of horticulture art. You might not know what it was, but maybe you can take a little bit along with you in this space. And to me, the art of horticulture art... No, I blew it again. Shit! <laughs> well, anyhow, anyhow. Thank you for enjoying my space and time. To me, the love of the art of horticulture can be horticultural art. So, in the past couple minutes, what you saw is my definition of horticultural art. So, good health to all.